everybody. So as we are continuing the journey of painting the uh, first layer of glaze uh, onto the cherubim, I'm going to do the face today, the human face. Um, so as you can see, uh, the wings and the other three heads are glazed in. Um, and again, this is really just uh, a working of the main colors. Now, I still have to go back and do a final highlight and a final shadow, but that's basically it. So this is this is the goal today with the skin, right? Is to get it to a place where the colors are exactly where they need to be. Um, I have a very good range of color and really all it's going to be needing is that final highlight and shadow that I'm going to do over the entire thing at the same time. So I wait for that at the last kind of final step because uh, once all the colors are on there, um, you know, this is, <laughs> this is not something that exists in real life. So I don't have a way really to, uh, you know, get a, get one light on everything, get uh, one, you know, type of light on everything so that the colors are harmonized in such a way. So I have to wait until um, everything is kind of colorized as it's going to be. And then, um, you know, wherever my, my main light is coming from, you know, that's already kind of built in from the underpainting. Well, it is very much built in from the underpainting, but, but, you know, like there's, there is a way to, to um to uh look at the image as a whole uh once it's our once it's in color and uh then i i do you know the same kind of glaze over the whole thing um in a shadow and in a highlight right but but everything else is already in play so as you can see the the wings right now are just in one big very bright very full on color. That's not gonna stay that way. Um, because this is my first time really painting uh, kind of metallic or chrome, um, I wanted to do it this way to kind of understand what's happening and then um, do the, you know, kind of do the actual highlight and shadow glazes on top of what's going on here. Um, probably if I do this four or five more times, I won't have to do it this way, but because uh, it's something that I am kind of figuring out as I go. There's no handbook that I have found online on how to paint chrome. So I'm just trying to figure it out. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's going to get massively knocked back right now. It's very much competing in the foreground. Um, it will not stay that way. It is going to get severely knocked back as I continue working. So let's dive into the face. And uh, here we go. All right, so I have mixed a kind of mid-tone skin color, baby skin color. And I'm just going to go over most of the face pretty much in this glaze. And then we'll have a pretty good idea of where we're at once it's on there. So this is a real light color. And really, I just want to get some chroma on there first to start working with the highlights and shadows that are already there. So I don't need much, right? And you can see that this is very, very light. I'm just gonna kind of glaze in. And as you can see from my reference, you know, baby skin is very different than adult skin, right? Baby skin has not been through as much life as adult skin has, of course. So, so it doesn't have, it's much more, um, 
I mean, let's be real. It's just much more silky. It's uh, smoother. There's not as much lines, you know, like there's just um, not that much life to be told on the skin. And that's what's kind of interesting about adult skin, right, is that you have this opportunity to tell a story about what the skin looks like if you want to as part of the painting and there's so much to me anyway there's so much beauty in that possibility uh, as part of the detail of your work so you can see it's uh you can see i'm just lightly going through with this color pretty much all over and then I am going to go back in and because I like to um, you know I'm almost working a la prima with the glazing right so I'm going to highlight not highlight um refine my color within the piece as I see it. And because I want the skin to feel very uniform, that's why I'm going over it with the same color before I head in with some of the um, more detail color and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. All right, as you can see, I've just filled in all of that with the same color. Um, and now I'm gonna go in and glaze a bit of the shadows. And so in my reference, I observed that this shadow is a bit like a purple gray brown. And so I'm just gonna lay that in a little bit. I'm gonna get something that's um, a fuzzier brush. So just the one I want to just kind of help mix. So I'm just gonna lay in some of this shadow very, very lightly. And now remember, there's already color where I am painting this. So there is an element of mixing this going on. And I'm just putting in more specific color where I want it to go. So here as well, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to harmonize these for sure. So I'm just getting in the shadow here. And this is even, you know, it's a little too red at the moment, but I'd rather start here and um, kind of blue it out, if you will, than have it be too blue that direction. Because there's a real chance that you get rid of some of the life. That you need to, you know, especially, again, it's a baby, right? So babies inherently kind of have like a rosiness that uh, many, you know, once, once, once it's an adult, 
Um, once they are an adult, they do not have in the same kind of way. So, so I think, you know, I like to err here on the side of kind of a red pink shadow, maybe too much so in the initial kind of um, color choice. Then if I'm going too gray right away, it really looks, you can, it doesn't look right. You know, it's like, that's, that's not what babies look like. And you know, and you know. <laughs> and this isn't just the only color I'm going to put in here, right? There's going to be um, quite a few other layers of, of uh, color. Careful, Baba. Careful over there. Then I'm going to mix in right on top here. Uh, as you can also see from some of the midtones and shadows, there's quite a bit of blue that's still coming through from the underpainting, right? So you're working together, not just with the chroma that you're putting on, but also uh, the underpainting that you have done that, that is, you, as you can very clearly see, doing quite a bit of work um, already here in, in uh, getting the skin tone where you want it to be. So at this stage of the game, really, it's all about being very delicate, very intentional. And, you know, this is really where you see what the underpainting has done for you all this time and what you've done for yourself in that underpainting, right? And start finding some of those darker shadows. So he doesn't have eyelashes yet. Um, he will. <laughs> uh, he definitely will. But eyelashes, like a lot of, you know, like the hair on not only his head, but um, also the, you know, the uh, eyebrow hair. This is one of those things you leave to the last minute. At least I do. I definitely do. And I would recommend you do as well. Um, because because, because, because it's, um, that's a wonderful detail. You know, you don't, you don't, you're just going to cover it up and there's kind of no sense in, in uh, getting into that kind of detail until the very end. You know, you're, you're building up something and you don't, you don't want to put the, um, you know, the final decorations on the cake until the base is ready, right? And eyelashes are definitely part of that final decoration. So here I am. Observing, I'm gonna kind of do a little bit in the eye just to kind of keep some of those um, colors and harmony that I'm working with here. There we go. So as you can see here, I am, I am constantly, the pause of my paintbrush as I'm painting that you can see is me checking my reference. So pretty much at every couple brush strokes, I'm looking back to make sure 
what I am doing is what I need to be doing. Because there isn't, there's nothing worse than um, at this stage going in somewhere because you think you know what you're doing and doing it incorrectly. Try to avoid that. You worked too long to get this correct, to give up now, as it were, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's pretty important that, um, that you maintain your accuracy in this stage. starting to kind of come alive. And I think, you know, from what the underpainting looks like, that beautiful opalescent blue, right? I always, it's always hard to come in with this color here because in a way you're messing it up, you know? <laughs> this is utterly gorgeous underpainting that feels like it could be done it could be done you know like you could just walk away and people would be like yeah sure that's a painting you know um that is an accurate representation of something and uh there you go you can throw in the towel and um be done with it and and the temptation is real to do that so to kind of come in now you know, and, and kind of start making a mess of things again is not easy. And, and it always, it always hurts a little bit you know, every time, every time I have to do it. But, uh, you know, you're not starting from scratch. There is already part of that underpainting is still coming through. And to, you know, really, um, I, I feel that when I, I achieve kind of the best, the best of the Miche technique is when, is when I'm finished, there are still spots where I can see that underpainting shining through. And no one else need to know that that is the underpainting. I know because I did it, you know, but, but there's something, um, uh, but there's something to be said that, that that underpainting still is in dialogue with the finished piece, right? And, and I, I think that there's moments where you want that to shine through and leave it alone. And, you know, like I'm just looking at my reference again. There's moments here where that is the correct skin color. And I'm not, you know, like you can still see the underpainting through it because you know it's like you know it's there and I know it's there. So, um but it, but it is the correct color for what I am doing here. Same thing with parts of the eye, right? Like there, this right here is the correct color. So really all I need to do is just fill that in there and uh, I'm good to go. So that to me is kind of when I'm at my best um, during this process, uh, that is how I know that I am... Um, you know, that I'm, I'm not only uh, kind of utilizing everything in my toolbox correctly, but that somehow I'm achieving kind of the best, the best that I can here with, with this um, underpainting style. Okay, so I'm going to go through now. Um, I have a very small brush. I'm probably going to get an even smaller brush. And 
start glazing, start glazing in um, even more of this detail. Okay, I'm continuing to build out some of this shadow here. Now, of course, just like I did with the other heads, I'm going to come back in here with some white very shortly. And uh, that'll really just go boop um, exactly how I want it to go. But before I do that, I still have quite a bit of work to do on the shadows. So I'm not there yet. Soon, but I'm not there yet. I'm still building out a bunch of this color in here. And just being very mindful of where and how I do what I need to do. So the first color that I used was a, um, it was sepia, permanent rose, and a bit of Payne's gray. Now I've done a bit more sepia and Payne's gray into that mix and I've added in some um, yellow ochre in that glaze. So there's just a bit more of a gold tone to the shadow, as you can see. So I'm now blending that in to the purple. And of course, yellow and uh, purple are opposites on the color wheel. So they do a thing, right? And you can see how they play together as I'm, um, as I'm blending everything together. But that's kind of, they make a really nice uh, a shadow element as they work together. It's not too dark, it's not too light. And they um, are in harmony as they talk to each other on the on the image. Okay. So I'm really, you know, I'm still being very delicate. There's going to be some fine lines here very shortly, right? But right now I'm just kind of going in uh, very softly. And I haven't done any of my, my um, lines yet. Although, you know, you can see that I'm starting to build up some of the shadow in those places. If I just went in with that line right away it would it would just it wouldn't look right and it would be too harsh um and it would just be very illustrative and and not not the way that we have spent all this time working on this painting to be right that's that's something else you want to do some you know does dark dark outlines around stuff like that's a different thing than than what we've got going on here so um it's worth spending the time building that up and you know of course because the ear is part of the face on some level you can't you can't ignore it um, I actually really enjoy painting ears. I know they're one of supposedly one of the hard things to do. I found lips myself to be 10 times harder uh, than ears. Ears I find fairly easy. They're just a funny series of shapes. And, you know, to be fair, the same can be said about lips. Lips are just a funny series of shapes as well. Um, there's just something about the ear which um, just for me, it seems easier to follow than lips. Lips, because, I, and probably uh, if I were to hazard a guess, it's because lips are just so stylized. So it's, um, oops, 
it's just harder to get out of the mindset of what that stylized lip looks like, you know, since, since we're all small, you know, you draw cartoon lips and like, that's all you do, right? It's like, no one ever bothers to actually like, look at what real lips look like. You just draw the cartoon version of lips and you, you know, you call it a day, but <laughs> you know, that is not at all what lips look like. Uh, not even close. So it's a weird, um, it's just, I think, probably uh, we're just so conditioned to, to do lips in a very particular way and it's just harder to break. So I know exactly what ears look like because I haven't drawn a thousand pairs of ears as cartoons, but I've probably drawn, you know, thousands of cartoon lips <laughs> it's just so ingrained um so that is my current uh current kind of obsession is that i really want to understand lips um you know as as what they look like not what you think they look like so and I think for me, realism is this kind of imaginary realism specifically is about um, jailbreaking those assumptions we have about what things look like and uh, really diving in with sincerity about what our eyes see. And I've talked about this before. It's really... Uh, it's such a revelatory practice simply because um, simply because our, our uh, literally our brains are programmed to some degree to fill in blanks and the more we um, the more we get used to making assumptions about what our reality looks like, the more your brain just fills in, happily goes along filling in those blanks. Because, again, on some level, that's what it's supposed to be doing. So, you know, it isn't so much the, what everyone thinks of, is the gorilla, um, you know, the, the gorilla coming onto the scene of the, the people throwing the basketball around. Although, you know, that's also in there to some degree. Um, it's more that just, you know, there's just pixelation that occurs uh, in, in your mind and, and your and your eyes and your brain is like, okay, well, since these pixels here say this, we're going to assume that those pixels here say the same information or I can at least map that assumption onto there, right? So um, you can't actually see certain things and it takes a real effort to uh, break that and so it's kind of this funny endeavor to go beyond what your eyes see and actually um actually see what's there and this is only you know it's it's the weird thing is is that you think visionary material happens when you see things that aren't there right so it's not it's not that like uh, a visionary material of course to some degree is seeing like beyond what's there but when when the the weird thing is is that when you actually see what is around you uh it is fairly visionary there's a lot going on that is right there right in front of us all the time that we are not seeing because it doesn't fit in with our expectations of what we should be seeing and this practice, this seeing the way I paint and the way I try and, you know, teach painting is 
to uh, really have a meditator's viewpoint on, um, on the practice of actually looking with your eyes, which in turn um, and I should say, not even just a meditator's viewpoint. This is a magician's viewpoint, which in turn opens up a realm of visionary, uh, visionary mm, seeing, if you will. Um, that has always been right there in front of you, <laughs> but just uh, not as not clear, you know. All right, so what I did is I just took some Payne's grain, a little bit of blue, and so I kind of went in and did some of the shadows around the eyes. And now you can see this is really, you know, things are starting to take shape here. You can kind of see what's really happening. And this little guy is starting to come to life. Hello. Smooth up there. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna keep kind of going in with some of these darker so now I have I have a couple different brushes in my hand right if you only are any artist will tell you you generally have at least two to three brushes in your hand mostly then they just start getting you are like holding six brushes at a time so this is the brush I'm using for the soft shadows you can see because it has a very kind of uh, soft edge there this is the one I'm using as my blending brush and this one that is nice and new and a very sharp tip point at the end there. Um, even though they're filberts, they're very small filberts and it can kind of be used as a point. Um, I am using that to kind of go in with some of these darker, uh, darker lines um, where I need them. So once I've identified kind of what my shadow colors are, I don't deviate too much because they're correct, you know, as far as, as far as it, it will go for, for what the painting wants. So um, I'm still using that sepia combo with the permanent rose and Payne's gray. Um, I'm just layering it on um, with a bit more chroma. Now I haven't done anything to lips, to cheeks, you know, I'm just still getting a general feel here for the face. Um, uh, for the, gen uh, you know, the, the median skin tone, if you will. I'm not going in to do anything else yet. Um, wow, I like to do some of that stuff. Lips I'll do uh, in this session. But how I like to do some of that stuff is save that as a secondary, like a quick secondary glaze. Um where I do cheeks, the nose. I can do a little bit now, but but I still, you know, that's nice to have that be rosy. You want, especially a little kid, right? Like you want him to have rosy cheeks. It's just necessary. <laughs> they just have to have rosy cheeks. 
And so I'm just going in here and um, still building in this uh, shadow just little bits at a time. And again, not forgetting my ear. I, I don't like saving the ear at, to a separate session because I've got all the colors I want. So I need to, um, it just makes it feel like it's part of, part of what's going on if they um, happen at the same time. So if you can, always do the ear at the same time as you're doing the rest of the face. If it's at an angle like this, right? Even if there's two ears in there, you, it's just best to have them involved <laughs> from the beginning. So that is starting to feel pretty good with what I'm working on. And now I feel confident that I'm going to do some of these darker moments. Here now, there's going to be eyelashes, of course, that go in right there. Of kind of building in some of the darker spots. Feels like it's time for that. Same kind of thing. There's going to be eyelashes here, so I'm just building up that shadow to where the eyelashes go. Making sure I've got the eye. You know, there's always that highlight right there. It's kind of a wonderful line of shadow right here. Kind of leads into the eye. Looks like he's got makeup on right now. <laughs> And I just keep kind of bouncing around a little bit, adding more here, adding more there, very delicately building up the image. And so this is, if you've painted Alla Prima before, this should be very familiar to you. This is how you would do an Alla Prima painting, just not, not in glaze. <laughs> um, you know, you, you work very similarly, just just in a much, much thicker paint. So why don't I just do a la prima is probably what you're thinking. Well, um, I find this just much more satisfying. <laughs> I'll stop. Um, I find the underpainting process much more satisfying. I find... Um, I really enjoy the amount of paint I have in a glaze. Um, I get overwhelmed by a lot of paint. <laughs> uh, I like I like the um, I like the subtlety of it much more. Uh, I like working in Alla Prima. It has definitely its advantages in certain ways. Nothing wrong with Alla Prima. Personally, 
I just, I like the, um, I just love the subtlety. For me, the subtlety is a big part of it, and I really, really enjoy it. Okay, so this here. Um, this is one of those things that this shadow is a very complex thing, right? And you can see that as it's kind of getting built in. It's a very, um, you know, both sides of the cheek. Of a very particular type of shadow and it needs I will probably need a second layer of a shadow going in there is my guess um, and you don't want to overwork it in this first layer right it's better to do a second layer than to overwork it and mess up this one <laughs> That's the rule. Um, okay, so this feels pretty good for the moment. Now, I'm going to go in and do a bit of that pink that I was promising. Some permanent rose. And a bit of um, Venetian red. I love Venetian red. It is an intense color. And it is just a wonderful color. So I'm going to mix that kind of into... The skin tone that I initially painted, and I'm just, this is gonna look way too much right now, but I'm just gonna kind of go into certain things very, very lightly. And, uh, dab in to there. And of course, you gotta have pink in the ears. And when the light shines through the ears, they're actually very pink. And so there's this really funny color that's kind of happening in here. Now it's starting to make sense, right? Like now that that little bit of pink is in there, it's actually starting to look like something. I'm gonna do the same color, the lips. And suddenly, Suddenly the little guy comes alive a little bit more. Okay. So something I have noticed, speaking of lips, Um, lips that actually look like lips, not like fake lips, is some people, myself included, and my son included, have um, an extra highlight on top of the lip. And this is a funny thing. It's not... Uh, it definitely does not get included in the um, cartoon version of lips, ever. 
And so unless you kind of finally observe what's happening with lifts, you miss it. And not everybody has this, but like I said, I do. And it adds just kind of a funny extra layer onto what's going on with lips anyway. So um, when you're painting lips, when you're painting someone's mouth, observe and see if they are one of these people that have this extra highlight uh, above their top lip. So you've got this thing that I never remember the name to, um, that uh, kind of the little, you know, shadow here in the middle. And then there's a highlight, and then you have the meat of the lips kind of coming in. And um, I was looking at an, like a, a, you know, drawing, anatomy for drawing book. And they highlight, they brought it out. They noticed, they noted that this is something that happens. And it was a revelatory experience. And I was like, oh, that's why I've always had a hard time painting my lips and a hard time um, with uh, Hawk's lips too because there's this extra thing going on that I don't expect, you know? And again, it's, it's um, part of it is just, you know, it's very difficult when you've been trained to do something to unlearn and do it a different way. And so that's, that's just what I'm coming up against when I'm painting mouths. It's just... Um, so ingrained to do it in this one way that I, uh, you know, breaking that almost lifelong habit is very hard. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get that in there. And that will be made much darker as I go. You can kind of see I'm just kind of slowly bringing this out here. Okay, now I'm in a place where this uh, is quite a bit of the um, shadow underpainting. I am going to start bringing in kind of the first layer of white. So we're going to take a break here and I will see you uh, next week for the highlight part of this. Uh, and then that will really harmonize and see where we're at um, as kind of part of this first layer. So like, subscribe and share and I will see you next time.